Hello, this is a pen that I've been meaning to review for a while. I've had some ups and downs with this pen, some back and forth whether I like it or I don't like it. I think most of my issue with this pen is that I think it's overpriced and I'm not sure what I was thinking when I purchased it. I did purchase it with um, a bit of a discount, but still Comparing it to some of my other demonstrators, I'm not sure what I was thinking. But, all in all, it is a very nice pen, as it should be. I think I've shown this in a previously curling inked video. I think that's the only time it's made an appearance. But this is the Aurora 888 Trilo BT Cobalto. Um, so this is uh, the Cobalt Blue satin finish there. It is a, a very beautiful pen and that's kind of why I was really eyeing it. I didn't, it wasn't an impulse buy. I did actually take my time um, but once I saw the sale and then I had some points and that kind of set me over the edge. Um, but I, I don't, I will, I will say up front, I don't regret it. I just not sure if I would do it again. So, um, with that said, I'm going to show you the box because the box is insane. So, this is the box. This is the outer box. That's the inner. Um, let's see, what do we have? Since Aurora, since 1919, Italian Passion. And this is some information on the Trilobiti collection. It is inspired by um, the transparent nature of marine fossils that um, are found that have been extinct for about 65 million years. Apparently they they are transparent so hence the transparency in the the pen here. It's a demonstrator. Um, so it says um, Aurora was, it was inspired by the harmony of its wrapped spiral shape to create this limited edition. Um, so it's a transparent resin fountain pens. It actually says plexiglass um, on their site, wrapped in elegant satin finishes. And there's your social media information. This is a limited edition of 888 pens, or not 888, 388. Um, and it does have a limited edition of only 388. Cap and barrel and transparent resin and blue satin trims. I really love the blue satin trim. And fountain pen, solid gold, 18 karat with a blue PVD treatment. And I'll show you that. The nib is very, very nice. So there we have the fancy outer box. There's Aurora. And the sign of a dream. Just some information on it. looks like their headquarters. And they're in Torino. And this inner box, very swanky. So I grew up, as I've said in some previous videos, I grew up poor. So the poor part of me is very impressed by this box, but I didn't really buy the box. I didn't spend this much money for the box, but I must say that the box is absolutely fantastic. And there is Aurora. Again, let's talk about the solid gold nib. This actually smells like leather, and I wouldn't be surprised if it is leather. Uh, you have a box of ink. They didn't label the ink, but it's sepia, what they said. But it looks like it has a a blue. It, I think it's blue, actually. Maybe sepia comes in some of the other trim colors, but this is actually a blue ink. I'm going to have to check that out. And the pen was in the sleeve. And more information about the pen, how to use it. Warranty. What is the warranty on this pen? 
two years. Ah, I don't know about two years. I think it should have been longer for the price. So, I bought this in November. So, in November it would be one year, so I will have one more year of warranty. Which is concerning, and it's concerning because I did actually have to send this pen back. Um, I bought it from Atlas Stationers, and Brendan at Atlas Stationers um, helped me out a lot. The piston knob actually stopped working. And um, the section, the section was just um, coated in ink. It was the ink had gotten all in between the section there. Uh, you can still see some staining there, but that's okay. But it was um, before I sent it back. It was all in the section and everything. And um, at that time, I had J. Urban Emero de Chavoy, which was a perfect ink in this pen. But I don't know if it was that or what. But it just kind of broke down on me. The piston wouldn't move. Um, so Brendan got me in contact with Kenro, who I guess is a distributor of these pens, and they took care of it. Um, the only issue that I have now is there are micro, I don't know if you can see, but there are micro like fissures or cracks in the cap. They don't leak, they don't suck up ink or anything, but for a pen this price, I really think that, that shouldn't exist. Um, you can see my limited edition number. This is number 40 of 388. Move this before I catch the pit on fire. But there's the beautiful PVD coated solid 18 karat gold nib. Absolutely beautiful nib. A beautiful pen, really. And they also have these in. I um, think there is a brown one, brown satin trim, and black satin trim, and then there's a silver one as well, all with satin trim. And I think each are limited to 388. So there's the piston knob. Beautiful pen. I like to put blue and green inks in here. I think it looks really nice. Again, the pen is absolutely beautiful, but it doesn't feel. Let me let me go ahead and get out of the way. How much this costs? Retail, without any discounts or anything, um, brand new is eight hundred ninety-five dollars. Um, with a sale and rewards points, I got this from Atlas for six hundred and seventy-one dollars, which. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. I, I I don't know. I think I was just so excited because the sale was just two hundred and some dollars off, and I just couldn't resist because I've been eyeing this pen. But once I got it, it was like, hmm, this doesn't really. It's not. It doesn't really impress in person the way that it did in the photos. But with that said, once the piston issue was fixed, once the section was all cleaned up, I really love this pen. Would I buy it again? Probably not. Am I happy that I have it? I'm absolutely happy that I have it and I am grateful that I was able to waste $671 on a fountain pen. So before I get into the specs, um, I'm just going to quickly talk about, no, no, I won't, I won't. I'll, I'll talk about the pen and then I'll talk about some of the options later. So again, this is a fine point. There's the feed. I'm not sure if the feed is ebonite or plastic. It's probably, I'm not sure what it is. I didn't see it in the specs. But again, that's a fine. It writes kind of like a medium. 18 karat gold nib. I have this inked with a combination of 
Private Reserve, the Infinity, Infinity Turquoise, and Leonardo Officina Italiana Blue. Although this looks blue, it actually comes out green here. So I think my mixture is a little different than my swab. Cap, this pen is 5.4 inches. So it's, a, it's not a big pen. 5.4 inches. Uncapped is 5.2 inches. Again, it's a good size pen. Kind of slim for some probably. And uh, posted, it's 6.3 inches. So it's very good posted. Um, it's not back weighted. Uh, this is a pretty light weight pen. It's 25.5 grams. And these come in extra fine all the way up to a uh, I'm going to say extra fine, fine, medium broad, a double broad, and a 1.1 stub. Again, this trim is satin, rhodium plated. It's beautiful. I just love the way the trim looks. Just classy look. It says Aurora, made in Italy. Again, number 40. Number 040. I just think the trim and everything is just so classy. You can see their little ink got behind the piston. I'll never be able to get that out probably. I'm a little gun shy um, when it comes to moving the piston back and forth. So I'll just ignore that. And this, although it says resin, I guess maybe it's a composite, but it does say um, that it's pl actually plexiglass. So it should be fairly strong. Um, those micro fractures there, they just they annoy me. Um, but what can I do? I don't know if I can send it back because it's a limited edition. I don't know how many um, of these they have, if they have to make one. But I may consider that. I probably will consider that because that shouldn't be happening in a pen this, um, this expensive. But again, uh, this collection was inspired by the transparent marine animal fossils. And it did include a bottle of ink. So, I'll write a little bit and I'll show you how nicely it writes. And that's never been a complaint. From day one, I've always been impressed with the way that this pen writes. So this is the Aurora. Trilla BT. Cobalto. And the Cobalto just refers to the color of the, the trim, Cobalt. This is a fine 18 karat, and it's a, it's a it's a bounty nib, and the ink is Private Reserve. Infinity tu Turquoise, and Leonardo Blue. The Leonardo Blue is becoming quickly one of my favorite blues with the Otto Oot, just the, the, the plain blue. I really like it. You can see that this is actually more of a, a teal. Once it's actually mixed in the pen, so it doesn't look anything like that really. So we do some... No pressure, so that it's a and it's a it's a wet pen for sure. So there's there's nice shading. There's definitely nothing I can say bad about this nib ever. From day one, it's just been a beautiful, beautiful writer. And a beautiful pen. I think it's just the the poor person in me that um, gets a little 
put off by, uh, by the amount of money that I spent on, on this pen. Now, I've spent, you know, the JFK pen and the Visconti Homo Sapiens, but those pens in the hand, when I put them in my hand, I can feel that these are eight, nine hundred dollar pens. This one um, doesn't. But with that said, it doesn't really have to, I don't think. It's just, it's just me. So this is eight ninety five retail, and I paid six seventy one. It's a need to. I've been fiddling with the piston, so it doesn't normally do that. I just need to prime it a little bit. Six seventy one. Sale and rewards, which was no doubt a good, you know, a good a good bargain. <laughs> bargain. Um, so my thoughts on this pen, it definitely has a solid build quality. I mean, there's no, even with my issues, I definitely feel that it's a quality build and a lot of thought went into building these. It's not easy to make a demonstrator pen. Um, so it's, I definitely see the engineering in this pen. Um, the coating of the, the cobalt blue trim. I mean, it's a it's a classy, um, minimal minimalist uh, look. Has a minimalist look to it. So that I do like. It, it, this is definitely one of my best writing nibs that I have. It's smooth, but it has that nice pencil feedback that I like. I don't like to have the the graphite feel in all of my nibs, but I like to have at least a few of these um, types of filling nibs. And this one definitely has that nice graphite feel to it and you can see it's a, it's a it's a definitely a wet writer for for a lefty I think it's it's okay um, depending on your grip um, but that's that's wet that's dried so yeah I think it'd be pretty good for a lefty this is still wet. This this is still wet as well. So a side writer may, you know, extreme side writer side writer may have some issues, but overall I think it's good for a lefty. Uh yeah, it's a beautiful pen, but I still think it's it's way overpriced. I think it's prone to some scratching. So I actually when I take it to work and I do take this to work every day with me, I put it in this dried and case so I don't want it to um, get scratches it's definitely not as smooth and shiny as it once was so um, I try to protect it as much as I can so it's a it's a little de delicate and again those macro the micro cracks or fra fractures in that cap um, but all in all I think this this pen um, will stay with me I definitely wouldn't do it again, but let's talk about some options, some smarter options, I think, for demonstrators. And you've seen this one, hopefully. This is the Opus 88 demonstrator, and this one has a extra fine point. Um, and then this is a Yovo extra fine steel nib again a nice demonstrator you know it doesn't have the fancy fancy trim but you know it does have some satin trim here um, it's not, I, I think this is a beautiful pen so for for the Aurora what we had here was, was this was like this, but it's just covered in blue. It all seeped through. But that's the Opus 88 demonstrator. I also have an Omar here, which is 
quite a bit bigger than so if you like a bigger pen the Omar is good and this also has an extra fine It's an extra fine Yobo. Again, it also has a satin trim, but it's a much bigger pen. Getting to some that are maybe a little bit more comparable as far as size. Here is a Narwhal Original. Yeah, I guess they all have this issue with seepage. But this is a Narwhal Original. And this one is the, I believe this one is the Broad. And this is also a very nice, very nice option for a demonstrator pen. And I don't think just just as just as beautiful. And then you have the, the Twisby, the 580 ALR. Put a nice satin clip on here. And you can see they're actually pretty similar in the way they're designed here with their their piston appointments the the blue so these two are probably the most similar the twisby is a little bit longer than the aurora but as far as girth they're pretty comparable so but the nibs are are very very different so this is twisby 580 ALR and this is a beautiful writing pen just a smooth. You see the nice grip. Nice grip there with the ridges. This pen is made in Taiwan. Just nice. Excellent. I would probably buy a bunch of these and skip this one if I were you. And lastly, we have the Asbine V126. We'll give this one a try. I think this has Emerald de Chavour in it. And this is a fine. I love my fines. So that's the Asbine V126. little bit of ink in the cap. I did have the piston open. Oh, it's a very nice one as well. It's more aligned with the body shape. But, I mean, you can definitely feel the quality in this pen versus this pen. It's not, um, I forget how much these were, probably like $35. It's definitely not, you know, that much more of quality but um, this is also a, a good option for people with a uh, good sense versus versus me but yeah I just don't I, I um, no I wouldn't buy it again like I said before but I am um, I'm happy to have it um, all in all it's a good pen and if you know it's in your price range uh, why not? So I'm going to use the, before I go, I'm going to try the Yoseka nib log so you can see how that looks. So this is the Aurora. This pen loves green ink. Balto is fine. Ink 
as I said, private reserve, infinity turquoise mixed with Leonardo, Regina Italiano blue. This is 100 GSM paper. Very thick, fine. Again, my lazy dog has been kicked out. Hence the quiet. And this, this paper is very... Um, absorbent, so it, it doesn't really do the wetness scale very, very well. And nice flex, nice, nice and bouncy. Get in frame. So this here is yeah, thicker than that. Thicker than that. I think this is probably 0 0.45. So my notes to myself about this pen expensive. As I've said, too expensive. But it's classy and beautiful. Superb brighter. Um, feels like a medium. And that's okay with me. Love the nib. So that's my, those are my thoughts on the Aurora 8888 Trilobiti Cobalto. It's another view of the pen. It's a beautiful pen. Again, happy to have it. It's in my, my it wasn't my um, smartest. Uh, buying decision, but that's life. Now I'm just going to enjoy it as long as I can. So thank you all for watching as always. I hope you're all doing well. It's very hot here in Maryland. We had a reprieve for a while. We had 70s and 80s for most of June. And now it's 90 degrees, muggy, and raining pretty much every day. But thankful for the rain. Thankful to be here. Thankful for all of you guys who tune in and watch my channel. Take care of yourselves and I'll catch you later.